What's going on, Laker fans? Welcome to Laker Lane. I am Christian, Mr. All the Above ENT here. And today, of course, as always, we're here to talk Los Angeles Lakers basketball. And hey, this time around, I mean, it's a little better than the last. I mean, I've, the weather's a little bit nicer, you know what I mean? It's not as many gray clouds, uh, maybe a little drizzle still. But nevertheless, it's not raining, pouring, thundering, and, and gloomy as it once might have been a few incarnations of this series in the past because Lakers are finally winning a few games. Um, I did discuss the win against the Nets, but since then we also beat the Spurs and we also beat the Pistons. Not like world-beating teams by any means, but we got to beat the people in front of us. We got to beat the teams in front of us, and we did that. And we also did lose to the Suns. And we'll talk about a little bit of all those games, mostly the, the last game against the Suns. But more specifically, I want to talk about the helm of the victories and the reason why we've been winning. And honestly, in midst of Thanksgiving, I'll definitely uh, throw it out there. The reason why I'll be a little more thankful this Thanksgiving is Anthony Davis. Shout out to Anthony Davis, who over the course of the last few games, specifically since LeBron has been hurt, um, he just really turned it up a notch. And this was the AD that personally I know is there. Like I, I know Anthony Davis is a generational talent and half the time I'm just like, I want to poke him with a stick and like do something. And uh, as of late, it looks like he's starting to definitely pick it up a little bit. I mean, that's an understatement. The man has been a absolute monster, honestly looking like one of the best talents in the league, which it isn't news to me, Anthony, but um, ultimately, if you have games like you've been having, winning is going to come along with it. The guy has been dominant 30 and 20. I mean, that that was one of the stat lines he put up yesterday. It was a 37, I am going off the top of my head, I think it was 37 points, 21 rebounds, 5 blocks, 5 assists, just all around impacting the game, both offensively, defensively. He's really just a pivotal player and, a, and an anchor on our team. And he's playing like it. And, he, and he's really playing absolutely phenomenal right now. And he's the reason why. He's the reason why that the Lakers might have a little more hope. He's the reason why, well, our record isn't, you know, 3-13 and 13 and it's closer to 5-11. and 11. Um, Granted, we still have a lot to dig ourselves out of. We still have a hell of a hole to dig ourselves out of. But we're seeing encouraging signs from Anthony Davis. Um, he still is going to scare you with the fall every now and then, or else it isn't AD in its truest form. But regardless, I'm very impressed with AD. And I am just interested to see if we can get this version of AD when Braun is back entered into the games. And um, I'll cover that in just a second. I, I just quickly want to discuss this, the Spurs-Pistons game to just quickly recap them. Um, Anthony Davis, there's a recap. Uh, along, you know, other players definitely got involved as well. We did get Dennis and Thomas Bryant back, who by all means um, definitely helped fill in some minutes, some much needed minutes that we definitely needed. Um, I'll start off with Dennis, who hasn't seemed to got his legs under him entirely. I've seen good Dennis Schroeder basketball, and um, although it seems it might be far removed from the NBA, it's been a while since he might have played good in the NBA in a little bit. Um, I do remember what it was like to see good Dennis Schroeder basketball, whether it was on the Thunder or whether it was on the Lakers uh, in 2020 or 2021. Whatever, all, ever since COVID, my years are screwed up. I don't know what's what. Um, so... He's filling in some minutes right now, and he's, he's you know, he's okay. Um, good good defensively for the most part, and he really hasn't got a shot to fall yet, or really any shot to fall yet. Um, but like I said, he definitely does fill a role that we need, and um, it's going to be interesting to see if he does pick it up, because if he does pick it up, we have a possible different team on our hands even if he could be a spark off the bench just a little bit and right now he hasn't really been that but even if he could just give us just a little bit every night um he can change a little bit of the dimensions of our team so so far i'm not gonna judge him too soon I i've seen good dennis ball and i just feel like we haven't got that yet 
Uh, Thomas Bryan, on the other hand, um, looking impressive out the gate. I don't expect, you know, Shaquille O'Neal skill set out of Thomas Bryant, but the man is running hard. He's playing hard. He has great chemistry with Russell Westbrook. Um, and realistically, we needed a center that we can play that wasn't named Anthony Davis. And we're getting that. So Thomas Bryant, so far, so good. I can't wait to see when Braun gets back because... We haven't really had Braun playing with much of a center this year that is an AD. Um, and if it has been, it's been like Wendy Gabriel or a few minutes with Damian Jones. So giving Braun uh, a young, athletic, springy... Not, I, when, I don't, when I say springy, I don't necessarily mean like hops, but just like springy as in my man really does run down the court hard. And that's how Russell Westbrook is finding him so easily. But overall, I'm impressed with what I see out of Thomas Bryant so far. Um... I wasn't expecting world beaters out of them. It was, you know, it was Thomas Bryant and Dennis Schroeder who are our two minimum contracts. Granted, they might be worth more than what that minimum really values them as. Regardless, um, we needed them back. And since they came back, they definitely have served a nice purpose, a nice role, filled in a, a good slot of minutes. And I'm interested to see how they move moving forward. And to talk about last night's game, this was a fun one. Um, Phoenix Suns, who at this point, I guess, are one of our rivals. And I feel that because I, I can't stand them. And I, I, I'm I glad that I don't think they'll ever really make it past what they already made it past. I don't think they're going to make the finals again. And if they do, I don't think they can win. Um, I don't believe in the Phoenix Suns. Maybe they can do some trades. Maybe they can do sign and make it happen. Um, but ultimately, I, I really don't believe it. Um... With that said, they did beat us yesterday, so I, I gotta believe it a little bit just due to the fact that uh, right now they are the superior team, as expected. But regardless, it was a very tough fought loss yesterday, and it was an encouraging loss. You know, we sometimes have a lot of bad losses that um, get you upset, and you definitely go to sleep a little more angry. I wasn't really expecting to beat the Suns yesterday regardless, but I really love that we fought literally. Um, and I really loved the fact that Anthony Davis, so against like Pistons and Spurs and even Nets, you're like, oh, you know, you're dominating the Nets, you're dominating the Spurs, you're dominating the Pistons. He took it to DeAndre Ayton yesterday. Absolutely took it to him. And he proved that like, I mean, AD is going to be a X factor if somehow we make it to the playoffs. He's going to be an X factor in any series because He's a freak, not in the Giannis sense, but in the sense that my man can guard the perimeter while guarding the paint at the same time, um, while also being a monster on the boards and also being a literal dominant force in the paint. Like this is, he's getting buckets in the paint. It's not many jump shots. He's not draining threes. He's not even hitting much mid range shots anymore. He's just bodying people in the paint. And getting his board, coming back up with it, getting fouled, hitting his free throws. A lot of encouraging signs from AD. And a lot of encouraging gameplay overall from the team yesterday. Um, we definitely could have used LeBron James. And we definitely could use another piece or two to possibly step up. Now, if that is going to be Dennis eventually, we know it's not going to be Kendrick Nunn. Um, or maybe, you know, that's what... Ultimately, we're going to have to wait and see for a trade, which isn't happening anytime soon. It's probably not happening until closer to Christmas. So, made it to Thanksgiving. Let's take it one holiday at a time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but regardless, a really fun game to watch. And I will talk about the moment that I'm very excited to talk about. But um, ultimately, Spur, Spurs, uh, ultimately the Suns, they were the better team. They should have won the game. And... If we weren't maybe so poor from the three-point line that game, we win. If LeBron James played, we win. If, you know, we can always do the what-ifs and, and if this happened or, you know, a referee or the three-point shooting or Darvin Ham rotations, but ultimately we lost. So that's what it is, straight up. We did take an L, but we did have a lot of encouraging signs within the L. So... I like a game that we can take some good out of. And that's what we received yesterday. We continue to see more of the role players step up. And these are the people that we are paying pretty pretty low value for. The Austin Reeves, 
who continues to have very, very good games. Yeah, against the Suns, I'm not going to lie. He was getting bullied. He was absolutely getting bullied by Devin Booker. I'll talk about it. Which eventually led to Devin Booker taunting Austin Reeves after fouling him. Because I guess that's what you do after you foul somebody. You taunt them. Um, yeah, he smacked him in the face. Bah! And then he stood over him and taunted him. And then DeAndre Ayton came out of nowhere and uh, stands right over him. And I'm glad Pat Bev, who... Listen, Pat Bev had an incredible game last night. He did his job to the fullest. Honestly, a role player in the sense of that is Pat Bev's role. He had zero points and got ejected. One push and a hell of a lot of rebounds. Literally, that was Pat Bev's game last night. He had more pushes than points. So take it for what it is. I I'll, 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 I got a little bit more to say about Pat Bev, but he shoves DeAndre and this man goes flying. I'm glad he did it because I know Anthony Davis wasn't going to do anything. Um, but Pat Bev wasn't having that. He's going to take a suspension, and we'll talk about what that means for the Lakers moving forward in just a bit. But um, I love to see it in all reality. Like, I, I really do. Um, let us not be punked, especially by the Phoenix Suns. I remember when they were ass. They're still ass, in my opinion. Um, just, you know, a, a higher tier of ass. They're like a, a gourmet ass. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know what I mean. Um, regardless, Pat Bev doing the ultimate team move, and it's being a douchebag. But hey, you fight fire with fire. You're not going to walk over us. You're not going to do that to Austin Reeves, who, poor guy. He's... <laughs> He he been through enough yesterday, but he came back. He's doing good. He's doing real real good. Um, he's showing more aggressiveness on the offensive end. I was getting upset with him for not shooting and not being aggressive, and the fact that his hair kept getting in his face. And right after he got a haircut, so step number one, we're heading in the right direction. Lonnie Walker. Um, I'm gonna be so sad when we lose him next year for the fact that we can't pay him what he's probably gonna get. Um, the guy is great. He really is. Lonnie Walker is great. He's only a scorer. I mean, he defends too, but like, he's not getting much rebounds. He's not really playmaking by any means, but he's the scoring punch that the Lakers need this year, and he has came through almost every night. We're talking about a solidified 16 to 18, and I could see him eventually getting in the 20s, just, you know, further down in his career, but a 16, 18 point scorer a game. And he's had a, a such an incredible season this far. I got nothing but beautiful words for Lonnie Walker. Um, you know, Trey Brown Jr. is, is still doing, doing his thing. Um, Russell Westbrook is still doing, you know, Russell Westbrook things. And he's providing that energy. And ultimately, man, he's really, he's really providing that spark plug for the bench. And just for other people's confidence on the team. And you can see it glinger on as they play the game. And... I'm not mad at it, man. And I, I even posed the question, and it's not a question that I, I think he wanted to hear at the time, but I posed the question to my man, Matt, who you guys probably recognize from the Lakerland shows that we always do, um, or Dens, however you want to refer to him as. And I posed the question, would you sign Russ next year for like 10 mil? I know that's not like the like optics that we want to start looking towards to, but um, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to go back on my word because I've been, you know, talking a lot of crap on Russ, you know, beforehand. But he's been really good, man. And I'm going to give flowers when flowers are due. That is one thing, especially if you're putting on a Lakers jersey. If you're only doing good for us, that's all I'm asking for. And what he's been doing, I've enjoyed. Um, he definitely still has his Russell Westbrook tendencies and he gets out of control sometimes and he makes some boneheaded decisions sometimes. But... You take the good with the bad. And um, for the most part, it's been a hell of a lot of good. And honestly, it, it's getting difficult now. It is. It's getting difficult. And I know we're going to wait a little bit so contracts can get more tradable to make a trade. But I, I really don't know about moving Russell Westbrook, which isn't, a, isn't words that I thought would come out of my mouth earlier in the year. I, I truly did not think I would ever say that. I thought I would trade him for a bag of chips, but now you got to give me some really good chips. Um, maybe not really good chips. I, I'll take like, would you take Lay's? Lay's? Like Lay's are pretty basic. I, I wouldn't do Lay's. Cheetos, on the other hand. All right, I'll, let me not get too off topic. Um, but yeah, it gets interesting because 
if we didn't have Russ over these last stretch of games, I don't think we win. Especially with no Braun. We don't win. I could almost put an exclamation point on that. I mean, maybe we... Maybe that's exaggerated. Maybe we do win still. Because we did play some bad teams. The, the, the wins we got were against some bad teams. But, um... He's looked good. So, there goes my daily flowers for Russell Westbrook. As long as he plays like he does, I'm going to continue to throw him some flowers. And if he gets traded, I mean, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But until then, I'm interested to see how this team starts looking when we do get Braun back. And that's what I want to talk about right now, because Pat Bev is absolutely probably going to be suspended, whether it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in my bank account. I don't know. Um, I don't know how many games exactly, but he will get suspended. Which is probably like the best thing that could happen to the Los Angeles Lakers right now because, yes, Pat Bev is great defensively. Um, yes, I do think he um, definitely uplifts the team when he's on the court. He definitely is. He is a guy that when you play with him, he does raise the floor naturally and he has everybody playing harder. At least that's the... That's the theory on Pat Bev. That's the reason why every team he's on goes to the playoffs, essentially. And if we're not the team, that would be depressing. depressing. Um, but let's be real here. Um, I, we, I've, at least personally, over the last 10 years especially, I've seen a lot of ass come around the Los Angeles Lakers. Garbage grace the jersey. Um, I'm not calling Pat Bev garbage, but I must say he has one of the worst offensive bags I've ever seen. And we have Wenyan Gabriel, Gabriel on the team. So that's saying much. I've seen Robert Sacri. So take that how you want to take that. But Pat Bev has absolutely been atrocious. Hasn't cracked double digits once. Um, I could probably recall maybe one three-pointer shot he made. I'm gassing it. Maybe two. Um, he's been awful. And, you know, you can bring great, great things defensively. But when you're that much of a negative on the offensive end, it has hindered our team. And with him now being suspended, Braun possibly coming back, that definitely opens the door for Austin Reeves starting, who, after how he's been playing, I think it's kind of hard to not have him start. So I think Pat Bev getting suspended did Darvin Ham a easy job I'm making a decision. And you know what? If we go ahead and we go into um, San Antonio and we beat the Spurs with Austin Reeves in the starting lineup with Braun back, and then we beat the Spurs again with the same uh, stipulation with Braun back and the Austin Reeves in the starting lineup, and Pat Bev is now back from suspension, I think Darvin Ham is a wise enough man to um, say, you know what? This has worked for us for the last two games. Let's keep it going. You know, we're going to see some good things, most likely, within that starting lineup, some good habits, some some good things that they're going to get on film. And I think Pat Bev might slowly slide out of that starting lineup. And maybe it's already going to happen right now because he's going to force the hand by his suspension. And I do think that can be a very good thing to happen. Now, that would leave us with some problems. I'm not going to lie to you. That would leave us with some problems um, off the bench because we got... Now, Bev, Dennis, Russ coming off the bench. So it will get clunky. But I mean, you know, Pat Bev is a wing player anyways, right, Rob? Um, so it shouldn't matter too much. With that being said, um, it's going to change our rotation a little bit if that was to happen. And I do foresee that happening. Um, for example, maybe the end of the third quarter and the beginning of the fourth quarter wouldn't have such awful lineups. And it, a lot of the times it's really just diving with no choice because he only has the players he has and right now he doesn't even have Juan Toscano Anderson um, as a wing so he's forcing a lot of guards out there and I'm going crazy um, but yeah man so it's it's a lot of encouraging signs and I'm excited that Pat Bev got suspended or gonna get suspended ultimately we have a few games ahead of us that are very winnable I'm talking about Spurs, I'm talking about Spurs again, I'm talking about Pacers, I'm talking about Blazers, and then it's going to get a little harder. But um, regardless, we have a chance to stack some wins, and that is what we're going to need to do. And let's go into it with that mindset. Let's try to get that record right as best as we can. The West is really a, a free-for-all right now. Not one team is running away with it, but I will tell you one thing. We're very lonely at the bottom. 
um, with the losses that we've taken. I'm not going to say lonely, but we got to work our way out of it. So let's put in some work. Let's not eat too much on Thanksgiving. We can't have nobody coming back too fat. Um, and let's let's get some wins, man. Let's get some more wins. We were on a three-game winning streak. I'm not going to argue like it should have been four. I mean, Suns' loss was a deserving loss. But next time we face them, I don't want to lose. So let's be ready for that. Let's gear up. Let's get ready. We got the Bucks coming soon. I would love to get a few wins, build some momentum, build some proper chemistry, build some proper everything before we see Giannis, especially I believe it is in Milwaukee. So that will be the ultimate test for us. And who knows, maybe we beat them. And maybe that changes the trajectory of our season. So no more what ifs, no more, um, no more any of that. Right now, it's just let's see if it happens. Let's see what's going to happen as the season continues because this is our roster and it's starting to shape itself out just a bit and we're starting to look better we're starting to build better habits anthony davis is starting to to really gear up and we still haven't seen a good brawn this year so there's still there's still more to be discovered and we're going to discover it over the course of the next few games and i'm excited to talk about it and i'm excited to watch it um so i can't wait so over the course of the next few games guys what are your thoughts what do you believe what is your prediction on our record? You know, moving forward. You know, we got we got Spurs, Spurs, Pacers, and then I want to say Bucks. Let's just say Spurs, Spurs, Pacers. Is that is that three and zero? Oh no, Spurs, Spurs, Pacers, Blazers. There we go. Is that three and zero? Is that four and zero? Um, is that two and two? What are your thoughts? Where are you at with that? Um, I don't know when the next video is gonna be. I don't know if I'll do it after the Blazers or the Bucks game. But regardless, I will be here to talk some more Laker action next time on laker land so guys thank you for watching as always please like comment share subscribe let me know your thoughts currently on the state of los angeles lakers do you think it's looking up or you already are calling this season a quits because at one point i wouldn't have blamed you i promise but regardless let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section and guys as always first of all have a great holiday have a great thanksgiving but if i don't see you have a good day good evening and good night yeah. Yeah, I got the game all in my hand, ooh, and yeah Pop out with the drip and make a fan drool You could risk it if you want, this ain't no fan duel Yeah, I'm in a band's cool Yeah, stabbing for the breeze